Hello, my name is Richie and today I want to show you guys how you can improve your competitive maps so your 1v1 maps or your zone wars maps and I also have a 1v1 map that you can uh, play on if you are too lazy to build it yourself and with that being said, let's get right into it. You can create pretty efficient item spawners that not only look good but also are very efficient in the terms of space uh, because you do not have to place a million item spawners and you can always add new items to it. So what you need to do is you need to place down an item spawner and a trigger device of some kind. That can be a button or basically anything that transmits a channel. So a button, a trigger device or even a bumper. And all you have to do is basically set it up as you want and then the important thing is that you set the item spawner and then the option cycle to next item when receiving to one channel and then you want to set the same channel on the button or the trigger device. So as soon as you trigger the device and the item in that item spawner will circle and will give you the next item. That can be very efficient if you sort them after shotguns or after consumables. And that is very helpful especially in like zone wars maps or even in your 1v1 maps. Okay now I'll show you guys how you can create a starting sequence for your 1v1 maps or basically for any maps where you need to have two or more players starting at the same time. So first of all you need to lay down two triggers or more that are activated by a player. So how you can do that in the options, the first option is activated by player and you should leave that on. It should be a default setting. What you want to do is you obviously want to give a visual where the player needs to step to activate the trigger. Obviously if the trigger is visible or something like that and how you do that is all yours. So the next thing you want to do is you want to connect your trigger devices to explosive barrels. These explosive barrels are basically standing for uh, that barrier that goes down. So if you have set up the explosive devices, you want to place them next to an objective. So how this works is you are basically setting the health of the objective to the maximum health these two barrels can do. So that the objective only sends a signal to the barriers uh, if it gets destroyed. So that means you have an objective of 100 HP, so you need to set each barrel to 50 HP. And the cool thing about this is that it doesn't matter where the player is standing and which player steps on first on the trigger, the objective will only transmit a channel uh, or transmit a signal if both players stood on their um, marked place. So this one is more like a visual thing or more like a stylish thing you can do. Uh, but I really like it if you have like a, a three second countdown with some visuals or some sound effects. And uh, how you can do that is you basically set up the objective to a music sequencer, which obviously plays a music sequence as soon as the objective gets uh, destroyed. And at the end of that sequence, you will add another trigger, which um, then uh, deactivates the barriers. So you can start your 1v1 match. But there's one minor disclaimer and that you cannot play this starting sequence without having rounds because this type of starting sequence needs to be reset every round. If you do not want to play with the round system, I can show you guys how you can do it. It will be less automatic, but it still functions just the way it needs to be. So how you can do the starting sequence without rounds, it's very simple. You basically need two buttons. Uh, one of them needs to be connected to the music sequencer, which is basically your starting button. Uh, and if you press the starting button, you will activate the music sequencer and then the music sequencer will activate the barriers to go down. And you obviously need to add a reset button, which will then enable the barriers back again. Uh, obviously, this is not that automatic, but it works just fine. So for the end, I have a couple of quick tips for people that are not really want to dive into creative, but still want to create some maps. A checkpoint can be used to reset an inventory. All you need to do is set reset inventory to on. Environment damage is one of the most important settings in any competitive map. Here's how they work. And for the last one, if you want to add rounds to your game, then make sure that you have a winning condition, otherwise the game will not end. So for example, you could add last man standing or one elimination to win the game. That's been it for the video, hopefully you liked it, hopefully I could help you. And if you liked it, leave a like, if not, then leave two dislikes and I will see you guys in my next video, bye.